October 14, 1915, Edith Cavill was shot dead by a German firing squad. Within weeks, she had become a symbol of German brutality and influenced young men to fight against the Central Powers. Edith Cavill was a British Red Cross nurse during World War I stationed in Belgium. In 1914, World War I began and neutral Belgium was quickly overtaken by Germany. Miss Cavill didn't let the threat of German aggression stop her from helping all soldiers, no matter their alliance. Edith Cavill took a stand for the lives of all soldiers during World War I, despite German opposition. She continued to take a stand for those who couldn't, and had succumbed to being pawns for the European power struggle. Edith Cavill was born on December 4, 1865 in Swartston, Norfolk, as the eldest daughter of Rev. Frederick Cavill, an Anglican priest, and Louisa Sophia Cavill. Edith grew up listening to her father's sermons, and as soon as she was of age, she began working in her father's parish by teaching at Sunday school. Rev. Cavill instilled a strong work ethic in his daughter by providing her with a difficult but enriching education. So she was brought up in a family that was... Um very interested in looking after other people and setting aside their own needs and almost in a way being quite self-sacrificing so they didn't think about themselves first um, he thought about his parishioners first you know the people who came to his church and he always insisted that his children thought about them as well in her early 20s Edith Cavill worked as a governess for many families However, she eventually retired from that profession when her father became sick. Edith Cavill nursed her father back to health, and her success inspired her to pursue a career in nursing. September 3, 1896, Edith Cavill enrolled in London Hospital to begin her four years of training at the age of 30. Edith Cavill was considered a kind nurse, and her compassion for others continued until the end of her life. She worked at many hospitals for the next 10 years, continuously taking a stand for life by caring for the ill. In September of 1907, Edith Cavill received a life-changing position. She was named matron of Dr. DePage's training clinic, the first to ever be established in Belgium. Edith Cavill worked diligently to prepare these trainees for other hospitals. The clinic grew rapidly and by 1912 she had 60 nurses in various levels of training. Dr. DePage and Edith Cavill's nursing establishment continued to grow with different branches expanding off their original housing. In 1914, the Great War was beginning and Belgium was starting to see signs of distress. Edith Cavill was out of the country during the time of struggle and was sent a telegram warning her of Belgium's situation. In reply, she stated, My duty is with my nurses. At this, she quickly returned to Belgium. Edith Cavill believed that her mission in life was to protect those around her and take a stand for the significance of life. She didn't believe that she should abandon those in need so she could escape the brutality of war. In her eyes, the lives of the masses were worth more than her own. Germany at the time was entering neutral Belgium to carry out the Schlieffen Plan, despite Belgium's opposition. According to Professor Jeffrey Auerbach, the Schlieffen Plan called for the bulk of the German army to avoid France's heavily fortified northern border and instead swing to the west through Belgium on its way to Paris. Edith Cavill recognized the tension growing in Europe at this time and converted her hospital into a Red Cross hospital so she could continue to take a stand for the lives of hundreds of innocent people as she had done her entire life. As she once said, a woman does not take life, she gives it. Edith Cavill believed it was her job to take a stand for the lives of everyone and to protect them from death and hardship. Once the Germans entered Belgium, Edith had expected there would be large amounts of injuries. However, the rape of Belgium occurred outside her grasps. In the Belgium countryside, innocent civilians were lined up and gunned down by German soldiers. There were literally hundreds of Belgian civilians who were shot and who were executed. And a lot of Belgian cities and towns were... Um, burned to the ground. By August 20th, 1914, Brussels, Belgium was occupied by Germany and Edith Cavill persisted to stay and take a stand for the lives of all soldiers. Her willingness to help others spread onto her young nurses, creating a united front of women who would take a stand for the lives of all people, allied or German. Her hospital continued to lack action despite the devastation occurring around her. This restlessness eventually led her to join a covert operation which would direct Allied soldiers to her hospital. Edith Cavill would nurse injured Allied soldiers in hidden parts of her hospitals to protect them from the Germans. 
Her outposts would soon see hundreds of injured Allied men who would live to fight another day under the Allied name. David Toonmore was the first soldier Edith Cavill housed, and once he was released back into the line of duty, he was promoted to colonel. Edith Cavill wasn't just fighting for the British soldiers, she was taking a stand for life in a time of death. Miss Cavill snuck men in and out of her care in order to provide soldiers a chance of survival despite the risk of being caught. As 1915 edged on, the likelihood of being exposed continued to grow, and the battle between the European powers grew with it. Edith Cavill recognized the stress of her position and stated, My situation becomes more and more strained every day. Despite the possibility of being found, she continued to take a stand for the life and betterment of the soldiers. She hid them in her hospital and continued to sneak them over the borders. On August 12, 1915, Edith Cavill was arrested by German soldiers for espionage. The German forces felt threatened by Edith Cavill harboring Allied soldiers. They used the allegations of her espionage as an excuse to remove a threat from German territory, despite the fact that they had no proof she was involved in the crime. To Germany, she was someone that could threaten their success in the war, but little did they know that her execution would cause her to become a martyr in the eyes of the Allied forces. On October 12, 1915, a German firing squad executed Edith Cavill. Executing Edith Cavill was not calculated to transform Germany's fortunes in the war, but it was simply part of the logic of a war in which you eliminate what you perceive to be threats, and she was perceived to be a threat. Her memory, however, was not dead. October 21, 1915, British papers propelled her story into circulation. They made Edith Cavill into a martyr. After the release of her story, over 10,000 men signed up for the war. Not only did her story influence the young British men to join the war, news of her death spread as far as the United States and Australia. What made her story stand out among others at the time was the fact that it explained with vivid detail the atrocities of the Germans and how they were willing to do anything to win the war, including murdering a heroine such as Edith. The British propaganda machine rolled into action and Edith Cavill was the example that they seized on, you know, to use for their propaganda the purposes and to kind of push out these messages, these images of this nurse, this very pure and defenseless woman being shot by German soldiers. It was a very emotive image for them to use. And it's it's easier to use a single image like that of a single person who people can feel that they can identify with. It's easier to use that kind of example than it is to just talk about a lot of hundreds of people being killed and cities being burned. Um, it, it's easier if you've got a person you can present in that way and it um, arouses more emotion. The propaganda released after her death along with other sources effectively changed the Allied forces morale towards the war. She took a stand to save lives, but in the end inadvertently caused more death. With the increased number of enlistments in response to her execution, more people were faced with the terror that was trench warfare. Despite her belief that life was precious, the increase in enlistment was necessary to defeating the Germans. Without the propaganda that spread throughout the world, countries such as the United States may not have been as inclined to join the fight. I think it started to turn the tide of opinion in the USA against Germany and make people think, start to agitate for the USA to enter the war. And I think that was, that was a turning point across the world, really, that people just began to believe that Germ the German forces were, were basically just evil and had to be opposed. And the death of a nurse, you know, a woman who was a nurse who was just looking after people, really fueled that view and that opinion. Once the war was over, her remains were moved to Westminster Abbey in England. Monuments, schools, museums, and even a mountain have been dedicated to the work and impact Edith Cavill had on World War I throughout Great Britain, Canada, and Australia. Her courage would stand as inspiration for others to put the lives of the masses before their own. Edith Cavill took a stand for the lives of all soldiers through a time of horror in Europe. Moments before her death, Edith Cavill announced to the world that she was proud of the stand she took and the lives she saved by proclaiming, Standing as I do in the view of God and eternity, I realize that patriotism is not enough. I must have no hatred or bitterness for anyone.